Hello kind people of YouTube. There is a bunch of stuff I haven't talked about in my earlier video. So let's look at all the new stories of the day that I have missed so far and let's jump straight into it with one about an increase in mainstream adoption in reach even despite the current extended bear market that we've seen ourselves in. And what we're seeing here is that the number of crypto ATMs continues to steadily grow. Just going to read the first couple paragraphs of this and then um, if you want to read the rest you can read that yourself, the links are in the description. The number of new crypto ATMs around the world continues to grow despite the recent crypto market collapse according to data. Crypto teller locator Coin ATM Radar presented the data in a report published Monday, December 10th. Coin ATM Radar's information shows that in November different ATM manufacturers opened 209 tellers around the world and 68 of the previously installed ones closed. The net growth of 141 ATMs is approximately the same as in October, when the total amount reached 150. And it's just more data here, but uh, one important number at the end. There are currently 4,042 ATMs around the world that accept Bitcoin. And we are seeing an increase in the number of um, ATMs that also accepts altcoins. So we're seeing both the reach massively increase, 4,000 ATMs, that isn't an incredibly huge number yet, especially if you're considering this is around the world, but it is a quickly growing number. It's a number that grows by just about 4%, 3-4% every single month that will only continue growing. And even with this being a relatively low number, of course, you have hundreds of thousands of ATMs in any given country, 4,000 crypto ATMs around the world isn't that big a number. But you also have to keep in mind, crypto ATMs and Bitcoin ATMs are the kind of things that people will travel for. So you don't need one on every street corner, especially since most people don't use crypto in everyday life for point of purchase per, um, transactions. But having one or having a couple in the capital cities of most countries, having, having them in every large city, even if it's just one or two, that is all we need at this point and we are quickly moving towards that. That is a massive move towards mainstream adoption because we will need these to be available everywhere. We, we will need these to be available within a 30 minute travel of most people if we want crypto to become mainstream. Because people need an easy way to just purchase crypto. And for a lot of people there unfortunately isn't a way to do that right now. But that is quickly changing. Now, a lot of these only accept Bitcoin, but as we're seeing now, the number of altcoins accepted at ATMs increases progressively. More and more of the newer ATMs do not just serve one cryptocurrency, but you are able to buy Bitcoin as well as a host of other cryptocurrencies. They usually have all of the major, major cryptocurrencies present there. So a lot of change happening there, and it's a sign of crypto going progressively mainstream, and also of all these companies expecting usage to only increase in the future, because of course putting an ATM out there is always a cash investment, and you want a return on that, so these people are expecting that crypto will be around for a long, long time, that this crypto winter will not kill crypto, and I fully agree there. If we remain on the topic of mainstream adoption right now, we now have news that Facebook is developing a cryptocurrency. But um, this is probably not what you expect when you hear this headline. So let's look at what they're actually doing because it's interesting and not quite what I expected. Facebook is reportedly making a cryptocurrency for users of the messaging service WhatsApp, Bloomberg reports on December 20th. The token will purportedly be used for money transfers made within the app and will focus on the remittances market in India. So this is not something to be integrated with the Facebook platform, like you would probably expect when you hear Facebook is developing a cryptocurrency. It is not a token that is meant to fluctuate in value, to increase in value. Instead, they are developing a, they are developing a stable coin that is meant to be used for international remittance with a particular focus on India. And um, there are reasons for this, because here, like it says here, the Indian remittances market is significant. Nearly $69 billion in foreign remittances in 2017. That is almost 3% of the country's GDP. Um, usually international remittance is way less than that, is way less than 2.8% of a country's GDP. And WhatsApp is incredibly popular in India, over 200 million users. So about one in five Indians actively uses WhatsApp. And that is a number that um, the number of rural users at least has doubled in the last year is only going to go up more. So 
so doing something very interesting here. They are very much aiming for the same problem that some other cryptocurrencies are also looking at, um, at international remittance in countries where there's a lot of unbanked and underbanked people, as India currently still is. Um, India is developing incredibly quickly, but almost all of that development is happening in the large cities. And India has a problem where all of these people that are getting highly educated and make no mistake, there is incredibly good education available in India. And a lot of the 20 somethings there right now are incredibly well educated, have very good degrees, can work pretty much any job perfectly, speak multiple languages. All of these incredibly educated young people are leaving and um, the ones that are still around, they're all in the big cities. So there's a massive gap, gap being developed between the wealth in cities and on the countryside, the standards of living in the cities and on the countryside, and a lot of other things. And one of them is that in the cities, pretty much everyone is banked. Everyone has access to global finance, proper access, easy access, and the same access that pretty much everyone else around the world has. On the countryside, that isn't always the case. A lot of people don't have bank account, accounts, um, don't have access to bank accounts. And something like a cryptocurrency integrated in an app that most of them are already using in WhatsApp, especially if it's a stable coin where you can feel relatively secure, that is the kind of thing that will be very, very useful. Now, as I just mentioned, a lot of, um, a lot of the highly educated young people from India are leaving the country, um, most of them moving to the United States or the EU, a lot of them also moving to the Middle East or to, um, or to East Asia. For instance, to um, to Japan or Singapore, where there's a lot of great jobs, especially great tech jobs. So all of those people moving to other parts of the world, and a lot of them are young people who grew up on the countryside, moved to the big city to get educated, and left their country, and are now sending money back to their families. And that is exactly where something like this will come in useful. Um, this is also what other companies are working at, what other cryptocurrencies are aiming at. But if Facebook is developing this, there is a very good chance that this will find high adoption. If it's directly integrated in WhatsApp, that could be one of the biggest steps for cryptocurrency mainstream adoption yet. And we don't know yet. We don't know if they will fully integrate it in WhatsApp. We don't know if it will only be integrated in like a local Indian version of WhatsApp. Uh, we don't even know when this will be coming out. Allegedly, they are still in very, very early development levels. It is still a long time away. But just having the Facebook name behind a cryptocurrency, even if it's just a stablecoin, and having WhatsApp directly integrated in some manner, we know it will be integrated in some manner, it's just not quite clear how yet, or if it will only be for India or for the rest of the world. Gotta, gotta keep in mind though, India is also an absolutely massive country with a ton of people in it. So even just going mainstream in India is absolutely huge for the crypto markets as a whole, because that will normalize crypto. That will normalize the idea of digital currencies. We'll get them in the hands of a lot of people. We'll get people used to it. We'll open up people to them. And that is huge. Now, I'm not a fan of Facebook at all. I think there's a lot of reasons to be very, very wary of this, co of this company. The constant, constant security scandals, what they're doing with, their, with people's data. Just recently, there was a revelation that they, let, that they let companies access users' private messages. Even, even if you previously thought that you were being spied on, you probably didn't think that Netflix could read your private messages to like your family or to your spouse. So um, Facebook, very much not a friend of the company, not a friend of what they're doing. But I'm looking at this as what it could potentially do for crypto mainstream adoption for the crypto markets. And in that way, it looks promising. And you have to keep in mind, of course, WhatsApp is a company that was bought by Facebook a while ago. But um, while it is a Facebook owned property, WhatsApp does end to end encrypt its messages. So there's a different level of security to WhatsApp than there is to Facebook and to their own messenger. So maybe if this is being done by like the WhatsApp arm of the company, if this is being integrated with the same standard of security and of encryption into WhatsApp as a WhatsApp itself is as the normal messengers are, maybe we have nothing to worry about um, Facebook being the people behind this. But for now, um, I see two sides of this. I see the potential issues with Facebook being involved, with me really not wanting Facebook to get involved in the crypto world, but then also the potential upsides and a hope that if this is integrated in WhatsApp only, if this is primarily being created for WhatsApp by the WhatsApp people, 
that maybe we will see a level of security and privacy here that you do not get in standard Facebook. Let's have some news about Ethereum because something very interesting has happened here that um, a lot of people have been predicting would happen at some point and we've seen kind of similar things been done before, but this is the first time it was done in this manner and it's quite significant. A US news article has been stored in its entirety on the Ethereum blockchain in what its writer claims is a world first. Maria Bustillos, I probably mispronounced that, I'm very sorry, editor with the journalist-owned popular news site, announced Monday that she had achieved, uh, archived an article originally published in Death and Taxes magazine onto Ethereum in full, as well as storing its hash on the IPFS protocol. As a result, the article will be preserved for as long as the blockchain and IPFS persist. So what she has done here essentially is she has integrated an actual article, a full article that was published in a magazine directly onto the Ethereum blockchain, making sure that no one can ever mess with the text, that no one can ever make the text disappear unless they were going to make Ethereum as a whole disappear. This is pretty much why cryptocurrency and blockchain, or blockchain in particular, this is one of the most promising things about blockchain because it can democratize data and information in a way that no government can mess with, that no private person can mess with. No one can attack the website this is hosted on and make it disappear. No government can take the article down. No editor can tell the, uh, can tell the, um, the journalist that this article has to be removed. This is such a great prospect for journalism, for true independence, for true transparency for immutability. And it's just so incredibly exciting to me. Now, of course, it will take a bit longer until this becomes common, common or mainstream. And there's a lot more in this article, which I definitely say, read if you're interested in this at all. It's a fascinating story. But I just want to alert you guys to this happening at all, because I think this is incredibly exciting. And I don't think people recognize just how important this is, because um, just, just think about the internet. And um, how many websites that you were using 10 years ago are still around in the same shape and still have all the same content on them? Content on the internet is fleeting. Very, very fleeting. And even if you look past websites shutting down completely, content can be removed for a million reasons, sometimes against the wishes of the people who originally posted it. And in some manners, this can be very dangerous for freedom of information, especially if those are important information. Now, we have an ability that we never had before with blockchain. With Ethereum's blockchain and other blockchains as well, we have the opportunity to permanently store data in a decentralized manner that can never be messed with, can never be destroyed. And this is the promise, one of the main promises of blockchain and of crypto. And that promise was well known before. We haven't seen all that many applications of it yet. This is one early example and we're only going to see more of this. Hopefully in the future, all newspaper and magazine articles will be stored on blockchains. That way, an, a newspaper being out of print can never make a story disappear. A, news um, a newspaper going out of business can never make the website with the articles on it disappear. No editor can ever remove something because they personally did not want it out there. No company can ever have something removed. No government can ever have something removed. No cyber attack can ever destroy an article that might be, say, say country A has a negative article about it written by someone living in country B. If it's stored on a blockchain, country A can't destroy that. If it's just stored on a website, especially if it's older, country, B might, uh, country A might very well be capable of launching an attack on that website. And um, of course, if they just remove the article, it would likely reappear, but just the theoretical possibility of destroying the article, possibly hacking into the computers of whoever wrote it, maybe even destroying every copy of it that they had. Let's hope there's backups. There's not always backups. The ability of storing stuff like that on blockchains will really democratize, will, will democratize information, will remove the ability of oppressive forces to deal with what we can which information we can consume, which um, facts we can get. And of course, it will also destroy the chances of something being completely destroyed forever, which is a big problem we're seeing with the internet now. A lot of the content that was on the internet 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, is not around anymore. 
And there are some people who have dedicated their lives to making sure as much of that remains as possible. The Internet Archive in particular is doing a spectacular job. But if you're looking for something that isn't from a big website, you might be less lucky. Or you might, you might be unlucky that no snapshot from the day you need exists. And if we start uploading information like this, newspaper articles, and important facts, and content, onto blockchains directly, it will always be alive. It will never be destroyed. And that is a wonderful future. That really is the Web 3.0. That is the true evolution of the internet, of everything it stands for. And it is beautiful. And we are seeing a step made here in that direction on Ethereum. So that is wonderful. And let's briefly, just briefly talk about Coinbase. I know a lot of you guys do not like Coinbase. I'm in many ways, I am with you. I, I've been very critical of them in the past. If you've watched my videos before, you know how I feel about Coinbase. But when someone does something good, even if they're not people I like, even if they have done other things I disagree with, I feel for my own integrity and fairness, I need to point that out and I need to be fair. And I think the Coinbase CEO has done something admirable here by joining the billionaire's wealth pledge. I don't know what it's exactly it's called. We'll see it in the article in a moment. And pledging to give away a large portion of his lifelong income to charitable causes. And that I think is absolutely beautiful, regardless of what I think about Coinbase or him as a person in other ways. Let's briefly read, we're not gonna read the whole thing, don't worry. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong has joined other super wealthy individuals and in pledging to donate, donate much of his net worth to charitable or other causes. In a blog post on the website of The Giving Pledge, that is what it's called, founded by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett to encourage the rich to donate their wealth to worthy causes, Armstrong said, once a certain level of wealth is reached, there is little additional utility from spending more on yourself. Whether it's through improving education, creating a more level playing field, or increasing economic freedom, I'm interested in helping more people see their ideas come to fruition in the world. The CEO revealed that he had signed the pledge via a tweet on Thursday, saying, I'm still early in my journey of discovering how to have the most impact via philanthropy. Today, I'm proud to join the Giving Pledge as part of this journey. And we don't really need the rest of this article. He has not revealed the percentage of what he is giving away. I'm not aware if there is a minimum percentage, like maybe 10% or something like that, but I know a lot of the people who are in the giving pledge have pledged to give about 50% or even more of their earnings away. And um, I know there's a lot of things to hold against billionaires. Um, a lot of people think billionaires shouldn't even be able of existing for a variety of reasons. I'm, I'm not gonna share my own opinion on that, but um, the way I look at this is I think I see someone here who is obscenely wealthy and who is choosing instead of being selfish and just accumulating all that wealth, keeping it to himself, making a nice life for himself, who instead recognizes that with all the money he has, he can give away a huge part of it and still live an absolutely excellent life, probably without even noticing he gave all that money away. And further, he's he is realizing how much of a change he can impact on the world by giving that money away. And I think that's beautiful. I think that is absolutely beautiful. I personally have also taken a charity pledge. I give a part of all my earnings, including the little earnings that I'm making from YouTube away every single month. Um, I am giving to, um, to charities that have high effectiveness scores and that, um, that directly contribute to saving lives. And I have made that personal choice that that is how I should be dealing with my money, even though I'm of course nowhere near as rich as Armstrong here is or any of the other people involved in the giving pledge. But that is why I think this is beautiful. I think this is um, one of the best things that a human being can do. And regardless of what I think about Coinbase or about some of his other actions, I think that is admirable and I think he did something really good here. And I think I should be able to say this even, even generally as someone who is not a big fan of Coinbase. And to follow that up with a tiny little last piece of Coinbase news, they've just um, added six additional European markets to their platform. And those are Lithuania, Gibraltar, Iceland, Guernsey, I think that's how it's pronounced, Andorra and the Isle of Man. Now, none of these are big countries. The biggest ones are Lithuania and Iceland, and even those are not that big. Andorra has under 100,000 people living in it and it's very much just a tax haven. A tax haven and a ski resort pretty much with what Andorra is. But just wanted to let you guys know, Coinbase expanding, six new markets. These are markets that have not been well served by crypto in the past because they are so small that they haven't really been on anyone's radar. So I guess it's good that they have been integrated in some kind of systems. Um, this is not the huge expansion that um, some articles are, are describing it as because when you hear six regions, that sounds big, but these are all tiny regions, but still good to have these regions connected to the crypto world in a way that a lot of them weren't before. 
And um, we're going to see more and more market penetration like this in all places around the world. So some relatively good news coming out of Coinbase. I'm, I'm just waiting for them to finally add XRP. I mean, most of us are probably waiting for that, aren't we? I think we are. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end this video. I just wanted to give you guys a little update on some um, less huge, but still, in my opinion, important and interesting stories that I haven't talked about yet. Um, hope this video was of value to you, that you learned something and that you got some new perspectives from this. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. All the articles are linked in the description. In the description, you will also find links to my social media pages, as well as ways to monetarily support the channel. Any tiny amount is much appreciated. But um, what I would also appreciate if you don't want to or cannot give me money, because that is also perfectly okay, I'm, I'm not here to beg. I would very much appreciate if you could leave a like and a comment under this video. And ideally, if you could make it a habit to do that every time you watch my videos. Because I know all YouTubers tell you to do this, but it's because it really, really helps. It, in it helps incredibly much. I've been asking explicitly for likes and comments for about a week now, and I have seen the impact it had on how YouTube treats my videos. I have noticed you guys have been commenting, liking so much more. Thank you so much for that. And because of it, as a result, the YouTube algorithms have been so much nicer to me, have been showing my videos to a lot of new people. A lot of new people have found the channel because of how nice you guys have been in leaving likes and comments. So if you like my videos, if you find some value from my daily videos, I would really appreciate if you could just make it a habit to leave likes and comments because that is how you can help me in seconds without really investing anything except a few seconds of your time. So if you could do that, I would much appreciate that. And I'll be back with another video as always tomorrow.